Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. Juice like it's mini May, hijack four, renegade, 24, number eight, coach fade away. All this is 11 grade, still in school, let them hate. So it feels like every other day these prospects are now declaring for the NBA draft, as usual around this time of the year. And they're making it known to the entire NBA world that they're ready to make a run into the world's greatest league. One of the most lit times as an NBA fan is here. Even though there's a high possibility that the NBA draft ends up being pushed back all the way up until August, or even worse, September? Bro, I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna keep a stack, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm a junkie. I need some serious help because I'm in love with this draft stuff. I'm in draft spirit. I'm in my zone right now as we speak. So, so in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is something that I've never, ever, ever done before on this channel. A big board. Now, what a big board basically is, is just a bunch of prospects that you believe are the best in order. It's basically a ranking video, but I ain't gonna lie, and you can't even lie either. The word big board just sounds so official and just so smooth. This big board is gonna be putting my truth and all these prospects all on the table. Now, I mind you, it's not a mock draft. This order has literally nothing to do with the NBA draft. Big boards are not only based on how good these guys are right now, but also five, ten years from now. So now that you understand where I'm coming from, let's just get straight to it. Coming in at number one is the one and only LaMelo Ball. Now there's one thing that LaMelo Ball has that no other prospect may not have in this class, and that's it. It's the it factor. Now the it factor is what all superstars in this league possess, and LaMelo may actually have that in him as well. This it factor that LaMelo possesses is something that gives fans of distress, a feeling of relief, and a steady, stable shoulder to lean on when times get rough. No matter how much chaos is going on, the it factor never seems to be phased and always prevails even through the toughest times. That is what LaMelo has, but hey, his shoot percentages aren't the prettiest at all. In fact, they're quite hideous. But his feel for the game, the slipperiness out there on the field, the stop and go moves, the gears, and even the different pieces of speed that he plays with are. Now, Lamella Ball isn't perfect, and in past draft classes, he wouldn't even be considered a number one overall pick. But because of how imperfect this class is, there is no clear-cut number one overall pick like the past few years. It's a handful of dudes who are relatively in the same tier as each other, which makes things kind of confusing and kind of tough to put a list like this together. But if anybody in this class was going to be crowned the best player out of this draft, then I'm putting my money on LaMelo. LaMelo reeks of good vibes and has a stupid strong chance to have the same type of effect on a dead, deceased, and dry organization just like Ja Morant has had on the Memphis Grizzlies. Ja wouldn't be Ja without any excitement to his play or flash. That flash with just a dash of douchebag mentality can go a long way, and I believe LaMelo has a chance to be viewed in that same light as well. Now, whether or not he can perform day one off-rip just like that, in his rookie year is a whole nother topic for discussion. But him being a stud of a scorer and also a passer is highly likely in my eyes. And I believe he has the best chance to be the best player out of this class. Coming in at number two is Anthony Edwards. Now Ant-Man seems to be the best college prospect to pick out of the rest. The first few things that pop out about Ant is his NBA ready body and his quicker than usual feet that comes with it. He's much more talented than he should be with that frame. And is also one of the very few prospects who seems like no matter what situation he's put in, he's gonna ball out and be an all star caliber player, a super safe pick, and he's everything that you want in a prospect. Ant is at a point in his career where he doesn't have any major flaws to really weld on. Mans is strapped with heavy metal in every single area of the game. Now to my little ones out there, let's just slow down right there. When I say strapped, I'm not talking about no gun. I hope not at least. The only tool that I'm talking about that he carries is his God-given ability. I'm talking about that height, that length, and that athleticism. His only issue is that he just doesn't use it enough at the right times at all. And it's just a eh, whatever type of defensive player. And in reality, it, it shouldn't be like that. There's literally no scouts raving about his defense, and that is a problem, but not big enough of a problem to set him back in this big board. He's just way too crisp and way too sweet and smooth with his handle on the court and monstrous when he decides to attack the rim. He has 25 point per game score type potential written all over him and a chance to be a great defender as well. He has a similar build to Jalen Brown, except he has a much more advanced dribble and finesse early on into his game. Another thing that not only Ant, but LaMelo Ball has two out of this class that puts him at another level another tier above the rest is their confidence and their will on the court that's one of the most underrated aspects when it comes to evaluating just how good a college or overseas player could be if they're confident off rip that should also mean that they're comfortable off rip in uncomfortable situations look at the last few top picks in the NBA draft there's Zion Williamson he ain't no wimp John Moran isn't no simp Trey Young Luka Doncic I can go on and on and on but just know that that right there should be accounted when you're looking at these prospects that type of mentality coincided with of course with their talent could help them get onto a running start in their NBA career.
year. At number three on my 2020 big board is the next great French point guard, Killian Hayes. Killian has the same amount of skill as guys like LaMelo and Ant in my eyes. The 6'5 gunslinging PG has no clear weaknesses out there on the court. Other than him ODing, overdosing on the use of his left hand out there on the court, Killian gives me all-star vibes and has everything you want your starting PG to have in today's game. In order for your team to keep up with the rest of the young studs out there on the field. Killian is stupid underrated to me and is a top three talent in my eyes, but it's probably going to get slighted in the draft. Due to him not having the same recognition and clout as guys like James Wiseman, Opie Toppin, and the quote Anthony's of the world. It sucks, but remember the real always prevails and the eyes and the looks will come because people recognize talent. Killian is the real and is arguably if not the best then one of the best passers in this draft. And also one of the best shooters who just happens to be a shooter who's comfortable with creating his own. Hitting defenses with all type of dance moves on the court. Killian is levels ahead of every single PG in this class and that includes the Tyrese Haberton or Halbert Tyrese, that includes that dudes too. <laughs> Killian just doing the little things like snaking the ball around defenders and keeping them on their toes makes him a better prospect than Tyrese. But I'm gonna keep my peace until that time comes, which is in about three, four minutes. Until then though, coming in at number four in this big board is Denny Avdia. I said it right this time. Now, Denny as predicted has had a bunch of Luka Doncic comparisons thrown at his neck. Now, I don't think that thought is in as many people's heads as it used to be, unless you're a casual casual. If you're a casual casual, then I'm gonna need you to do two things real quick. I need you to shut the hell up for the immediate future. For the love of God, or if you don't believe in God, just for the love of yourself, you know, for the love of your existence, just stop saying that. Because it's not happening. They're literally two completely different players with two different play styles. Denny is bigger, faster, and probably stronger than Luka, and he's a great athlete. Denny likes to get up and down the floor and is more of a third ball handler out there on the court, maybe even second if he gets the opportunity. Now, what puts him above the rest of his competition is his passing vision. Now, he's definitely not a crispy, precise passer or anything like that, but he is definitely an above average one. He's a good passer, but on the fly. He can fling the ball in the most unexpected moments, which is hella useful in today's game. In transition is where he'll be his best at because he's actually an excellent athlete. Now I'm not 100% sold on Denny yet. I still have questions and those questions that I have specifically for him are the reason why he's at number four. I'm not too sure how his scoring will be on the next level on all aspects on the floor and whether or not it'll translate smoothly onto the court during these next few years for him. If he reaches his potential and can fill in these massive questions, without a doubt in my mind, at the end of his career, he could possibly be viewed as a top two, maybe three player out of this class. Coming in at number five is Big O. AKA the next impossible name to pronounce in the NBA. Say it with me, Onyeke Unkongu, Onyeke Unkongu, Onyeke Unkongu. My African roots are coming in hella clutch right now, bruh. <laughs> now, Big O may not be one of the most talented prospects, but he's easily one of the most translatable. His game just screams and yells modern NBA big. Big O is a 6'9, bulky, 245 power forward, likely center in the NBA. Now, what helped boost Big O's draft value undeniably was not only his play on the court, but also the play of the new all star band. Out of bio. Why you may ask? Well, that's because that's who Scott's compared to mainly, and that's who he believes he can damn near emulate. They have stupid similar physiques and are the same archetype out there on the court. And just like Bam at first, nobody really saw his passing ability being actually elite as a big. That's what makes Bam different. This is why he's so special. He's a defensive minded, mobile big who can make plays for others on the court. That's something that struggling teams will be drooling over and will be hunting for. Now, his passing and comfortability with the ball may be a hit or miss, but his defense really rebounding, shot blocking, and shot potential is really there. You see, Big O shot better from the free throw line than guys like Bam Adebayo and even James Wiseman. You see, Big O shot better from the free throw line than guys like Bam Adebayo and even James Wiseman in college. His form is actually super solid. He just didn't get any opportunities to display that on the court in college. And in the league, in an NBA offense, that's sure as hell going to change. You see, it's just things like that that causes prospects to slip and be overlooked in the draft in certain areas of their game. Some of these players haven't been given a chance to show off their complete bag because of these old school coaches and the play style that they really abide to. It's up to the big leagues to unravel and dig up their buried potential. And that is why I have Big O coming in at number five. I'm assuming some of y'all are actually smart and have working brain cells. I hope you do at least. So since he's at five, then that means that I think that James Wiseman is worse than him. And that's true because 
I have him at number six. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do not think that Big O has more potential than Wiseman. That's deceased. But I do indeed think that he'll have a better NBA career than Wiseman. He's way more solid than him. Now, from what I've seen over these last few years, it seems like James Wiseman was the poster boy for this 2020 NBA draft class. And that's created a lot of delusional bots hyping his name up till this day. James has a lot of flaws, way more flaws than that man on Yeki Unkongu. Big O. Now he is seven foot one, he's long, and he can run, he can jump, and that's why he so high on this list but for me he just doesn't belong oh so high as many people have him because when I continuously watch those same old three games that he's played I'm sorry but nothing really jumps out about his play other than the obvious on the court Mans is a legit seven foot one basketball player he's huge but he lacks true skill I believe but regardless of the facts I can't deny it you can deny it nobody can deny it he just oozes potential and he has a chance to fill in those gaps in his game because his shot is not completely broken and his free throw percentage sends an indication to that 65 5% isn't great at all, but it isn't horrible either. Occasionally, I would see him flex his fadeaway two-point shot in the shorts in the games that he's played as well. But outside of that, nothing really stands out about this man. His passing is not there. His vision is not there. His handle on the ball is not impressive either. What's really impressive about him is him in transition because he's a top-tier athlete. An elite lob threat, but everything else is really mid and alarming, especially his defense. Shot blocking is not the only aspect of defense. It's only one category of that. He's super suspect out of the pick and roll, but hey, he's a 19 year old dude and he has a lot of room to grow. For me, it'll just heavily depend on whatever team decides to draft him. Coming in at number seven on my big board is Obi Toppin. He statistically has been one of, if not the best college hooper out there. He's had a sensational year in college and really leveled up his game compared to last. And to many, he's viewed as the best available four in this class. And he definitely could be if Denny Fdia ends up being bogus. But the reason why Obi is at seven and not four like Denny is because of his flaws. His flaws in college could seriously limit his potential in the NBA. I believe there's no way in hell that he could seriously thrive in the league with those type of issues. For one, he's not a great creator for himself and others. Obi is a bucket if he's used wisely. Now he does have a chance to be a 17, 18 point per game scorer on the next level because he's a beast in transition and he also has an actual chance of stretching out the floor really well. Obi is instant offense. That's what I think of him as. I see him as a fine NBA player, but just not a life changer because for one, he reeks at defense and also he has slow twitch movement. He has real slow feet, but his slow feet just happen to be a thing whenever he's playing defense, not on offense. Man to spring. Even though he may not be the most star-studded player, he's for sure without a doubt one of the most safest picks. Coming in at number eight is Tyrese Halliburton. Now Tyrese is as solid as they come. The 6'5 PG put up a tasty stat line with healthy percentages. Now I have him on eight on my big board, just like Obi, because his potential is limited. Tyrese really doesn't have a bag out there at all. Man's got all the default moves equipped on 2K. I just don't think he's in the same tier as the rest because I give him little to no chance to be elite. He seems like he'll be a super valuable role player in the league. He reminds me of damn near George Hill, you know, solid. You definitely don't want to cater your offense to someone like him. No. If so, that'll be, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You building around, your favorite team building around Tyrese Halliburton, that's that's depressing. Tyrese is a piece that's meant to complement a star in my eyes. He is not the star. Rolling in at number 9 and 10 is Isaac Okoro and Devin Vassell. These two players are easily reversible at 9 and 10 for me. Simply because no matter what, Devin is going to be a super solid NBA player for years to come. But there's a chance Isaac becomes an above average one because of his ball handling and great defense. Devin's potential is rather easy to project, I'd say. But Isaac's is harder and more intriguing because he's comfortable making plays for others. Even though that's a thing, he's less of a safer pick and I'm not so high on him because his jumper is suspect. But of course, you know, as y'all know, they're 18, 19, 20, and they could easily grow. At the last two spots of this video, 11 and 12, is Cole, Anthony, and RJ Hampton. Both had underwhelming seasons on their respective teams, but remain intriguing picks. Cole has the upper hand, though, because he's more proven, I believe. But RJ has loads more potential than Cole because of his freak athleticism. But at the same time, he also has a lot more questions about him than Cole Anthony. But at the same time, there's a lot more questions about him than Cole Anthony. This is my 2020 NBA big board. Now, I definitely did leave out a couple prospects, but you know, knowing me, I did that on purpose. <laughs> if you want to hear about that, you're going to have to tune into my mock draft that I'm posting one of these next few days. Now again, big boards are sort of useless when it comes to this NBA draft process. It's basically just a visual representation of some of the best college prospects or overseas. But this is the end of the video though, man. I really, really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and seeing what I have to talk about today. That is, once again, extremely dope of you to do. But um, before you leave, I want you to go ahead and share this video with one of your friends, maybe two, three, 
for if you're feeling kind of crazy. I want you to go ahead and leave a like, comment, and also subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already because uh, I think I'm getting into my bag. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, go ahead, do all that good stuff, and more important than all that, I want you to make sure that you make sure you have a great day. Make your day great. But until then, I'll get right with you. No way, no way, yeah, yeah. Me back when I couldn't get a play, yeah, yeah. No hope, I ain't have a place to stay, yeah, yeah. I got the work, made the surf, free the way, yeah, yeah. Told my girl who'd have a thought.